In today's episode of the Post Christian Podcast, I'm excited to have with me psychologist and author, Dr. Chris Thurman. How are you doing, Chris? It's great to be with you. Well, you know, we enjoyed having you just a couple of years ago. You wrote a book called The Lies Couples Believe, and it was a follow-up to your book, The Lies We Believe. If you don't mind, I would just love to start with those two books. As a follower of Jesus, as someone who is trained in psychology, I know your passion is to help people find health, which really, as followers of Jesus, uh, the more we are transformed to be like Jesus, the better we represent him, you know, in this more yeah. cynical post-Christian world. Would you yeah. talk about some of the insights you share in the lies we believe and the lies couples believe? Well, I, <clears throat> for some reason, I've always had an interest in faulty thinking, uh, the impact of faulty views of reality on emotional health, on um, our relationship with God. So uh, ever since I was uh, young and in the field of counseling being trained, I just was interested, called and still call cognitive therapy. Coach of, you know, helping people make their thoughts more rational and reality-based. So uh, when I was working at uh, the Minersmeyer Clinic uh, over 30 had the opportunity to write my first book, which was The Lies We Believe. And uh, basically, I go into what I consider to be first beliefs that people can follow, uh, lies, if you will, and uh, what biblical truth has to say about those faulty thoughts and how to transform by the renewing of the mind. Well, and that's exactly right. The scriptures tell us we shouldn't be thinking the same way we used to think. And that's so many right. times we have these narratives going. Uh, maybe give us a little bit of insight into how you've helped couples and how your book can help couples who yeah. are not seeing things the same way. <laughs> well, a uh, couple uh, challenge because we all come into marriage with certain beliefs, attitudes, expectations. So when I'm working with a couple, uh, I'm especially thinking might either of them be giving in to, that are making it hard for them to get along. Um, so in that book, The Lies Couples Believe, I guide thinking about uh, uh, everything from our problems are all your fault to my spouse should think, feel. Um, I'm entitled to my spouse's love, uh, all those ways that I think the enemy wants us to think. Hmm. Uh, what are the principles of taking thoughts captive? How do you renew the mind? How do you get over to thinking on what's lovely, true, pure, and worthwhile so that you can make the marriage? Yeah, so critical, so important. And, you know, I, I really think that being in a city like Austin at a church like Gateway, where we say no perfect people allowed, I mean, one of the greatest mm -hmm. evidences for the fact that Jesus is real is is we've seen marriages that were on the brink healed. We've seen people find mental health. Uh, I, I want to talk to you about your newest book, Emotionally Healthy Christianity. We're going to give away a, a few copies to those who sign up for my email newsletter. But talk about some of the principles you're sharing in that book. Well, um, I... I came to be a believer. A strong interest in psychology. Those two loves, if you will, one person and the other for a profession, uh, really came together over the last 20 to 30 years of my career. And so I, I have been very 
what are, well, let me put it this way. I believe that Jesus Christ was the only person to ever walk the planet who was psychologically feeling and acting as he went through life. So this book reflects my last 30 years of thinking about what are or aspects of psychological and how did Christ model those for us? So emotionally healthy Christianity came out of that desire to better understand the emotional health of Christ. We all know him to be morally perfect, um, and you can't really separate out moral perfection from Less, I attempted to do so in this new and just talk about what are the main attributes of Christ from a psychological health perspective. Mm. I love that. I mean, several of the folks that are talking about how much they enjoyed it include um, John Burke, the, our founding pastor here at Gateway. And, uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to reading it. I just think this idea of blending psychological realities with bi biblical truth. Mm -hmm. is another way to communicate to the world that believing in Jesus can change your life and we're not sticking our head in the ground. You know, there are some right. things we can learn from the medical field and from psychology. Uh, and especially in a season when post-pandemic, so many people are struggling with their mental health or mm -hmm. know someone who is what are some of the other ways that you've encouraged people of faith to really become more like Jesus, as you described, and to be more emotionally healthy? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, part of that goes back to the thinking, thinking issue. Um, one of the ways that I encourage people to be more is to accept, to realize that his view of reality was accurate, that he never saw anything through distorted lenses, that he, his what we call self-talk, the thoughts that he was having uh, were always a lot. Um, so when I, we talk a lot about, you know, what was the view of Christ? What, how did he view reality? How did he perceive it when people, how did he view it when people were um, trying to trap him in theological error, uh, when they were out to try to get him killed? Um, feature of emotionally healthy Christianity is we have to think the way the Lord thought. We have to develop Christ. We have to view reality view makes us feel good or not. Hmm. I'm, I'm prone to tell my clients, look, we've got to be committed to the truth, how painful it may be. Hmm. We don't use that make us happy or feel. Sometimes truth can really be uh, painful. Mm -hmm. And Christ never shrunk back from that. He, he didn't ever say, well, I'm pretty this up in my mind because it's just too painful. Hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, you never see Jesus get triggered. <laughs> you know, you uh, you always see Jesus kind of rise above the situation. Yeah. And I know in my own yeah. life and with my own family, my daughter went through a few years of kind of walking away from her faith. She would be, I think, more post-Christian in her mindset in those years. And it was honestly my work through recovery. And, mm -hmm. and learning uh, to not be triggered. And when I am triggered to apologize, to make amends that she started seeing a transformation in me. I think as the church becomes more and more emotionally healthy, uh, more and more like Jesus, we're gonna be able to help those who are skeptics find what we found, new life in Jesus. Well, Chris, yeah. I'm super grateful. Your website is drchristherman.com. Thank you for the resources you, you've written for us. Keep up the amazing work. Thank you for being so kind and supportive.
All right.